Well, welcome back to Grandad's Art Space. I'm Terry. And I'd just like to invite you into my little art, uh, painting space um, and show you what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. I've been asked to um, show how I paint a, a Covenanter up, a Scots Covenanter. So I'm going to have a, a go at that. So I don't know how long the video will be today, but we'll, we'll see. But before I start that, I was asked in the week um, about where to get a mould line remover from. Um, a little tool that, that um, Games Workshop make. I think Army Painter make them as well. So if you're new to the wargaming or painting and you've never, you don't know any of these tricks, let me help you save some money. Um, don't bother with them. All you need is your scalpel. Yeah. And instead of when you're removing your mould lines, instead of using the sharp side, which you're liable to cut into, just turn it over and use the, the back side, which isn't sharp, and just hold it close to the blade and just gently go along it. And it only takes a few seconds to get those mould lines off. And you're not then digging in to the plastic and ruining the actual surface of the plastic so just a little tip for those of you who uh, may be new to the to the art scene um, to painting miniatures give that a try right next my paint what do i use well sorry for the motorbike going past i have actually got my own colour. Now I know with um, Warlord Games you can buy a set for the Scots and in that set you will have a bottle of neutral grey. Now if you take a look at that neutral grey and then take a look at my colour they are radically different. Took me a long time to work this colour out so, uh, do I share it with you all? Hmm, maybe I want paying for it. Nah, come on, let's share it. So how do I make it? Well, I start off by putting in an olive green. I know, weird that, isn't it? But an olive green. Now, this one that I use um, is... Oh, I've forgotten the company that makes it now. I think most of them are the same. They come in those little blue square pots. I can't remember the company. I could see the little pot, but it was one that I had left over and I, I tipped it all into one of these. But that's the actual, if you can see it, that's the, the description. Revel, Revel, that's where I got it from, Revel. That's the company. So I'll start with that. I then add in, some black don't overdo it put in a very small amount at a time and just keep stirring it up until you you, you see it starting to come into some sort of grayish color and then add a little bit of grayish blue now i got ridiculed when i went on one of the sites by the rivet counters saying that yeah, you shouldn't put blue into it because the, the, the dye wasn't wasn't the right colour in those days. Blue wasn't a known colour for putting into cloth. Really? Then why did they have blue bonnets? Yeah. Okay. So, let's do our own thing. I'm not here to compete with rivet counters. I'm here to enjoy my... Um, painting so i put in a touch of grayish blue to go with that black don't as i say do not overdo the black because it will turn very very quickly black is a domineering color put a little little bit more of the 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 grayish blue in if you want to until you get to that type of color then i'll leave it on screen so you can see it for a while if you want to try and get it close to that Okay, 
that's what I use. And then when I'm actually painting the figure, I don't use water to water down. I use my own flow improver, which I make myself, which is just, you know, it's simple. It's, it's just um, actual flow improver, uh, a, a, um, some deionized water, um, some mat. Um, I'll tell you in a minute. Let me get it. I can never remember the stuff. My memory is dreadful. Matte medium. I put some matte medium in. And some acrylic flow improver with deionized water. And then mix it up. And it's it's I find it far better than just water. It's up to you. You do what you want. You know, it's it's your painting at the end of the day, and if you want to use um, straight water, then fine, use straight water. I then undercoat just a straight grey. Oh no, that's a wash. That's no good. That's it. Surface primer, Ivaleo hand primer. That's what I use. I don't I don't use airbrush. As I said before. I don't use spray cans or airbrushes because when I do that, it's just, yeah, there goes all the detail. I've never, never really got the knack of, of spraying gently just to get a, you know, a slight covering. It just all just obliterates everything. So I don't bother. I do it all by hand. And I'm quite happy with the, with the result. It's very hard because I've got the camera angled right down low so I can, can hardly see the screen so yeah that's fine so let's start the pallets off the side all I all I use at the moment is just a little pallet like that you can see it's filthy I've just finished my Napoleonics with that that's all I'll dig it all out later and clean it all up um, I do have a a um, a wet palette off to the side here but I've got a tendency to use this more and all I all I do is put let's get it on screen sorry is I just put one two three four four drops of the flow improver in one little well and then give my paint a real good shake and when you put this on, you will have to put a couple of coats of this on. Because I've never found Revel the best for coverage. But because I had it, I wasn't going to waste it. And then all we do is take some paint from the pot, put it in another well. Remember to close the lid up on this, otherwise you'll come back to a pot full of hardened paint. Get as much paint off the brush as I can. Then I clean it in the water. Because I don't want to contaminate that flow improver, because I may need it for another colour later. Then I take a good dollop. Drop it in one, two, three, four drops. Mix it up with a brush like that size, which is a size four in the System 3 De La Roni range. That holds quite a lot of paint <laughs> in that brush head. So, putting four drops in, that's got it. So you can see, it's just starting to, I can't tip it too far because the improver will come out. It's just starting to run. It's just, it's nice. Right. Wash the brush out again. Now I'm just going to move my palette off to the side. Get my brush, dip my brush in the water. Because if you don't dip your brush in the water, as you all know, you put that straight in your paint and it will wick your paint up. 
and then just take most of it off with your fingers. Just put a bit on the end of the brush. You don't need to fill the brush. I've, I've lost count how many painters I've seen fill the brush and then moan when the ferrule's full. And they, they can't do nothing with it because the brush is split. And this is just a, a scrappy old humble brush. You know, it's not, nothing brilliant. I've had this brush for about two years. Year and, no, about a year and a half. Look at it. Nothing wrong with it. I'll show you a technique in a bit. Right. Remind me. Okay, let's start painting. Just throw it on. Now remember, I did say that you would need couple of coats on this and you certainly will but the point is you're keeping all the detail try to leave your shirt white or undercoat at the moment doesn't matter if you go over the the belt that's all that's got to be painted and just throw it on all over his jacket Get in behind that pike. Over his arm. Now, when you're painting Covenanters, remember that the, the pikeman did not have armour. I've seen so many Covenanters Painted up with armour. I dare say there was the odd one or two that filched it off the battlefield after a battle, but on a whole, they were not issued with armour plate. So, you will then, of course, come across a problem when you're building your Covenanters because there's not enough um, I'm trying to think what I'm trying to say here there's not enough figures in the covenant box for you to have a full 12 man covenant regiment no, there's 16, but you take the officers as well. But just men, there's 12 ranked up. So you can either you can either make yourself some arms, sculpting some arms for one of the others, or you can send off for another box more Lord games and take one man out and keep the rest of building up another group or you can send for the odd metal figure now I normally send for a metal figure but sometimes I will have a go and I'll sculpt my own arms now they're all done out of green stuff. The arms. This is Warlord figure. There wasn't enough arms in the box, as you know. They only put in um, four pikes instead of five. Don't know why they do that, but they do it. So it's not perfect, as you can see on that rear arm. It's not perfect. The light's dreadful, but it will do once it's painted. And that's what I do. Yeah, I've, I've done some more recent ones. I've done out of green stuff. You can see them properly now. Not the best, but they'll do. Hard, unarmoured pikemen that you get a lot more of. And you always end up with, a, with boxes of of the English Civil War, you'll always end up with pikemen left over that you can't do nothing with because the fact they don't put enough arms in the box. 
And I think that's that's a bit sort of like sneaky, quite honestly. They should put enough arms to cover the amount of figures that are actually in the box. Right. Okay. Or what well, the other thing I do sometimes is I will replace that figure, that missing figure, if I if I just can't be bothered to mess about sculpting. Let's face it, we all have times where we just, oh, please, just don't want to be bothered to do that. I'll replace it with a metal figure. Wrong. I like, I like the Perry's metal figures. They're nice. Um, I haven't tried any of Warlord's metal figures yet. In the Covenanters, I mean. I um, see so yeah, had their metal figures because you get them but the Covenanters are not about the Scots and then all you do is just keep slapping this on remember his gloves don't, don't bother going over his gloves Sometimes forget and douse the entire figure. But at the whole range, the Scots Covenanters are the easiest figures to paint. Obviously, because they are literally all grey. Yeah. You could do his socks grey as well, his hose. They used to wear. I like to have just a little bit of change because I think all grey, and you can just sort of like, oh, it's just you get bored of just painting the grey. So I, I alter it up a bit by painting the hose white or an orangey colour or a browny colour. Right, that's the first coat. Oop, there he goes all over the place. Is it dry? No, it's not dry yet. Just move on to the next one. Now, I did say that I was going to do a bit of history um, on the Covenanters, um, and unfortunately, I have been informed that I am not allowed by copyright law to read off um, out of books or out of written material like I did with the Fairfaxes. Uh, apparently I was, um, shall we say, doing the wrong thing like that, so I won't be able to do it, unfortunately, which is a shame, because I can't hold the information in my head. Um, I've got memory issues that I lose information as it goes in. Um, I've got a very poor short-term memory, and an even poorer long-term memory. Unfortunately, I can read a book, a page in a book, literally turn it over, turn the page over. Um, somebody asked me, what is it you just read? Um, I just look at them sort of like, I'm the glue, mate. Gone. So, it's a case of me having to constantly keep reading all the time, which in a way is a good thing. Because it's like reading it anew all the time. Uh, most people it gets down, you know, when they have these sort of issues, but if it doesn't me, I just live with it. And I see, I see it as more of a blessing than anything else, because it means that whatever I read, 
it's like reading it for the first time so it's always interesting and fresh I don't get bored of reading the same material or reading the same books I don't suppose a lot of people would look at it like that and go oh please can't be doing that what it is we have to suffer these things in life so just get on with it right I'm going to leave it there I'm going to put the the video on hold um, oops sorry 